right. Welcome to today's episode of Sheepreneur. It's yours truly, Basala. And Winnie, it good, feel good, feels good to be here again. Yes, and this episode is going to be really interesting. It's a love episode. Remember, it's a season of love. Valentine's season is here. And uh, I mean, everyone seems to be in love. Right, in love with something. Something or someone. Oh, you know, yeah, or something. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Someone. You know, there's a saying to love and be loved makes life beautiful. To love and be loved. I mean, most people find themselves loving and they don't get loved in return, and that can be really devastating. So, which one's more important, to love or to be loved? To love and be loved. Both. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But then it's it's great to love to give love without expecting it in return. But somehow, if you don't expect it and just give it a hundred percent, you get it right back. That's true. What you sow, you will reap. I like that. Exactly. Mm. And so since it's a season of love, we'll be talking everything love and business in between, yeah? Right, what does love have to do with business? Yes, so what's love got to do with is. that? Yes. See, sure. And so a lot of people seem that love is just, oh, it's a magic, it's a butterflies and everything. But there's something deeper than that. And we will unravel that today on this episode. So, the trivia of the day. I know we're all waiting for this. Passion versus Profit. Which builds a stronger, more strategic business? The drive for passion or a passion-based drive or profit-based drive? Hmm. What do you think, Winnie? <laughs> this trivia, I mean, you always tr- throw out interesting trivia every week. The drive for passion or profit, which builds a stronger business? I mean, while someone may say passion is what you need for a successful business, or for your business to thrive, then, I mean, you're in business to make profit, right? Correct. So how do you balance this? How do you, this, is a, this is a real question. It's a real question. I, I find that even a lot of women start a business based out of passion. Like, oh, I just liked to make hair, so I just started to sell hair. Oh, I just liked to cook, so I decided to go into catering. So are you doing the business just to do what you like doing or to turn a profit is it a hobby because there's a difference between a hobby and a business and a business of course you have to look at ways uh, you can monetize it correct and make money off your passion so we'll talk about this i'm sure we will get the right answer yeah sure after wait when you come back we'll give us your answers sure we're waiting waiting impatiently now for Mm -hmm. that hang on tight So we are talking love and success. What's love got to do with business success? Uh, I thought we were talking about business. Which one is love in the matter? Okay, we'll see about that. Someone may say this, just like Mister Lai saying, "What? What talk about business? What's love got to do with it?" Nothing, right? Nothing, right? Okay, we'll find out right now. What's love got to do with business? Passion and love for one's business or venture is pivotal for success. So, is, is, what, so passion and love, what's the difference? What's the difference? Oh. That's that's another ball game that we ha- we have to go in depth now. Passion is something that you do. You can wake up in the morning. You can wake up in the middle of the night. You just you just want to do it. You don't have to be put under any form of pressure to do it. It just comes naturally to you. Mm. So it's something you would do even if you weren't getting paid for. It? You, you weren't paid for exactly. You want to do it because you just love to do it. Hmm. You are passionate about it. So a lot of business ventures, Bisla, right. were born from passion. This is passion true. ventures, passion projects. Yeah, that's true. I've seen women who build business empires from just doing what they love from their bedroom. Yeah, and there are people that say, you know, do what you love. Like, even yeah. as a career, I mean, even Oprah says this, and a lot of people respect Oprah. Do what you love. And love what you do. And love what you do so it doesn't feel like work. Work. Because you spend so much time, quote unquote, working, if you're enjoying what you're doing, then you're more likely to stick with it. To stick with it, exactly. I mean, we're, we're going to be th- talking about women who, who turn their passion into businesses. I mean, one woman we all know is J.K. Rollins. Mm. I mean, this woman wrote this for a long true. time. She wrote books. 
and became one of the richest women in the world just from doing what she loved to do. And that's writing. Wow. Shepreneur out there or shepreneur to be. What do you love to do? That we can just pour like a lot of energy behind and who knows? And most times, people who start the passion project end up being billionaires, millionaires, were once broke, penniless, jobless, confused. And they just went on to do that thing which they love. Like for J.K. Rollins now, she was in that situation where she had to cross all of those obstacles. And she kept writing. She was rejected multiple times from publishers. She kept writing regardless. Took a chance and became a worldwide love story when Harry Potter series, you know, just adapted that. Took over. Took over. So it, it, it may sometimes look like, wow, when is this going to happen? But then if you were consistent enough to go on with that passion or drive that you love to do, somehow the day just... And there's something you said just fear. now. You said consistent. Do you know the days that it's tough, the, day, the days that it's hard, that it's not working out, it is your passion that will keep you going and let you remain consistent and keep, and keep pushing at that dream, that vision. So I, I do believe that passion is a critical part of this of, of making a successful business I think it might be tough to 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 create a business or a very successful business that you're not passionate about I mean it's, it's practically impossible because if I mean if you listen to a lot of CEOs successful CEOs that is right. talk about your business success they always say I'm passionate about this I just found myself doing I couldn't stay a day without doing this Right. it felt like it wasn't work it was just me Providing the solution, or providing the solution, this problem. this problem, and it just kept nagging at them. That's, and then it became passion. something that brought in money. Okay, and the money came with it. It's fine. It makes right. it even more beautiful right. to do this. But and then, then guess what? Because you are passionate about solving the problem, right? You keep looking for innovative ways to solve the problem. Exactly. And the innovation then leads to money. So passion can turn to money when you know what to do, how to implement it, the strategies you know to put in place, and of course, in, be innovative. So when what you just said, passion is not enough. Is it necessary? It's not enough. It's a ne- exactly. But this is nothing. I mean, everything in life is a competition. Mm-hmm. Everything in life is a you competition. Tell, yeah, let me tell, take you through that. Now, failing to keep up can be fatal to your ambition. So being passionate gives you a powerful edge that you can use to stay one step ahead of the game. Because you're passionate, you keep researching, learning more, trying to be on the cutting edge of what's going on in that space and then a byproduct of that, of that is that you're always on top of your game wow so it's a spring but passion first every other thing follows hmm. everything else will align once your passion is it's right. in line yeah exactly you're in the spirit actually huh. always <laughs> okay now let's talk about you know doing women that are doing there's this woman I don't know if you know of Spanx right oh mm-hmm. every woman knows Spanx Sarah Blakely if you don't know Spanx you ain't woman founder of Spanx let me take you through, through her story as she was getting ready for a party Sarah Blakely realized that she did not have the right undergarment to create a smooth appearance under the white garment mm-hmm Grabbing a pair of pantyhose with a control top, lately she cut off feet and started a Spanx revolution. Since that first DIY Spanx, she's launched an entire line of bras, underwears and leggings. She was named the world's youngest self-made female billionaire by Forbes magazine in 2012. Wow. Just offering a solution to women who want to look good. I mean, tell me the woman that doesn't want to like look like a figure eight under her outfit. She hasn't been born yet. I mean, Spanx is found in over and 50 Spanx? countries. Of course, because she just solved the problem for every woman in the world. And then she was passionate about solving that problem. True. I mean, solving the problem is not enough, but how passionate are you to pull through when huddles come? I'm sure and they shipping to over 50 countries is not it's a mean not, feat. It's not small. It's not business. small. It takes a high level of passion and consistency. And it's drive. like you're running a marathon. Yes. You know? You, you keep going. It's not about the first 100 meters. It's no, about sticking it's it through to the very end. A lot of people do business like sprint. sprint <laughs> and they, look, they go, oh, they want to do X, Y, Z all at once. Some people call it initial gra And then boom, when the storm comes, how are you able to navigate you your way going? through? Are you going to shut it down and walk away? Were you really passionate about it to begin with? Or was it just, oh, let's just make money. Let's hustle, hustle. Hmm. 
So what are you facing right now in your business? You may, you may be facing a lot of hurdles that you're saying, oh my, I can't keep going. But we know that you wake up in the morning when you have purpose. It's easy to just get up from your bed and just ready to take on the world. And to be honest, even when you're passionate, there, there's, there's moments, everybody has these moments where you're just like, especially when it's just... You are trying this, it's not working. Seals, oh, this, that, staff frustrating you. Uh, the tax guy, Lassa, everybody's just on your neck. And you're like, this Nigeria self. But then, and Africa. Yeah, this Africa self. And then, but then you realize, okay, even if you consider letting it go, you start to feel a bit like, so what will I do with myself? As if there's nothing else to do. You, you can't go a whole day without thinking about the business. You are onto something you're passionate about. So. Now let's talk about one business that really gets to everyone, and I've been eager to study and understand how they do Which this one business. Is this? Yes, what it is? Yes. Ah, wow, lashes. Apple. Ooh, Apple. Ah. No, there's something about brand loyalty. People stick to businesses that ha- are passion driven. I mean, we have the latest iPhone 11, right? Right. People are waiting in line for the next iPhone innovation. So what Apple has done is create a need for something you never knew you needed. And something you are... They've created a need for the future. You're waiting for the future. Sure. And when a new product is launched... The people already in line that sells to out. To get your hands on it because it, it, there's a status symbol associated with the fact that I'm the first to have this. So I'm on the cutting edge of technology because I have the latest iPhone. You have the brand loyalty and there for you. a status symbol that comes in iPhone. Exactly. IPhone is not cheap. So it sends a subliminal message that, you know. You are in a particular, you know, I'm league. a successful person. I, I have an iPhone. So tell me if if the producer, I mean, we know um, Steve Jobs is no more. Yes. He got it on board and then mm-hmm. he left. It out, it that's what passion does. When you go into your business with that passion, it outlives you. It has the capacity to, to outlive, outlive you, you if you create the right structures and succession plans. That's exactly. Why, that's why what you said about it being a necessary ingredient. But there's other things that have to also be in place. So when we say passion, you, you, some people say talent is never enough. And that's true. Passion is very necessary. But that's not all to it. But that's, passion is what drives everything. Said, right? If you don't have the passion to keep pushing through, let's say, let's say you are an actor or a musician, to keep going for the auditions, to keep sending your demos, even when they say no, and you keep going. There are people who is, maybe it's when they've sent out their 50th thing. So what if you stopped at five? You will never get to number 50. It is passion that will make you keep going. So that's like, it's the feel. Auditions. It feels that stubborn resolve to tweak the solution. You know, it's often right. it's possible. And then, I, I don't define anything. Every time you have to tweak, tweak your, your solution mm-hmm. or tweak your talent yeah. for the audition, it's almost like the last one was practice. People don't say it that way. People just think, oh, I didn't get that thing. But you, if you look back, like, what, didn't, what didn't I do right? So you, you go back. You have opportunity mm-hmm. to review yourself and then improve yourself. And then you now find that the next time you are more refined. You even have more clarity on what you are selling, what your brand is about. That's why you will find a lot of startups evolving their brand over time. Uber's brand was very different when they first started. Yeah, of course. Now. Because over time, they've discovered a lot of things. But that's why you even hear in startup world, fail fast, iterate fast. So yeah. as you're failing, you quickly learn the lesson, move on. To the it work. helps you get up, keep sit back, look at what you need to do, what you need to put in place, and then... How you keep... It's more like you f- you're falling, but you're not falling. You're falling to rise up again. So you've only fallen if you stay falling. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. If you fall and you get back up again, keep moving, now you're stronger, you're more learning, you have a few scars on your shoulder, so you know you know, you know know what you learned from that lesson. So it can't happen to you again. So we have a lot of women who are celebrated globally, whose business are do- businesses are doing great, mm-hmm. uh, gaining a lot of attention. Women are doing us proud out there. Women are doing... I mean, in Nigeria, we had the likes of Tara, yes. who started makeup in her living room space, right. and then she rose up to have chains of stores, Correct. you know, makeup stores and all of that. We have Zaron Beauty. We have Zaron Beauty. A lot of them. We have um, this lady who owns Rough and Tumble. um, Correct. Adenike, Nike, Ugulasi. Yeah, so that her business selling clothes off her boots. Yes. You know, in nine to six, and so you can start small and be global. That's what passion does. Passion mm-hmm. really helps you to start small and then see beyond where you're starting. Just start where you're knowing that you can. You know, it's more like. Humble beginnings, but you right. know you're gonna have the end that is far greater than how you even started. And then also, to be honest, too, we also there's all different kinds of entrepreneurs. There, are women, there are some entrepreneurs that don't want to be a global business because 
of the pressure that might come with it. And and it's okay to be honest about who you are and what your vision is. But there's some who want to grow a business that eventually they won't be CEO of and eventually it will be run by other people and they will just be the founder. One school of thought is also that you could just be passionate about business as a whole, passionate about creating a strong organization. It doesn't necessarily mean that, let's say, for example, you manufacture cups. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are passionate about cups. It might be that you're just passionate about creating it, jobs. Yeah, have, but there has to be or a Or the solution. Preferring because you know that the there's a need for cups. Exactly. Okay, now let's talk about this lady who owns Flying Doctors from Inside okay. Nigeria. Yes. Hola. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hola. You know, she started that business. She is a helicopter pilot. She is, right? And a medical doctor. And a medical doctor. Yes. And she started that business because she lost her sister. Correct. Who was in, had an emergency and yes. they couldn't get to a doctor because, of course, you know, the traffic and every other thing that has, you yes. have to deal with. And then she, she had this business, line doctors, servicing the needs of people who need to be flown in an emergency. So she didn't necessarily, of course, she's on a helicopter. She's passionate about that. But she saw the need for this. That's what passion does. Right. Because you're passionate about it. You begin to, your eyes begin, the eyes, so of, your, you, you the eyes of your understanding begins to be enlightened. So, yeah, and you don't just see a problem. You see a challenge. Solution. And, and you're then thinking, how do we overcome? How do we this. solve this challenge? It's almost like when you were in primary school. You had a, a challenge or a question in an exam. You know, X plus Y equals what? Then you, you're, you're trying to solve for the answer. And that's what's really starting a business for me is how do we solve for the right answer and you might have assumed that this was the answer and then you go out into the market and the reality is well people want something different and you keep adapting your solution until you find the right mix so passionate people or successful business or people don't look at the paychecks you know there's not usually especially in the early days it's usually not about the paycheck if it's about the paycheck especially in the beginning you're just, likely to just get disappointed, especially when you're not cashing in. Yes. Initially, the initial stage where you have to deal with a lot of expenses and all of that. If you don't have enough passion to pull you through that, you may just fall along the way, roadside and Very say, I'm not easily. doing this anymore. Very easy. Especially it's so if difficult. you look at other people and you, you feel like they're more successful, then you start to compare yourself with people, and that can just make you feel like, you know, why am I doing this? Let me just go and get a job. Mm-hmm. And, and to be honest, I even I find even it amazing. A lot of, I find it amazing. A lot of entrepreneurs act like they don't have a job. You have a job. You have a job. The That's a job. Running, people just be like, oh yeah. I mean, let's talk about I, careers I now. You know, a lot of people do this. <laughs> Not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. The people who are, thank you. Yeah, true. That that thank is. Thank you. But you know that most Nigerians want to be entrepreneurs because they feel like entrepreneurship is like anything it makes it's like oh I'm no, an entrepreneur people it's think not entrepreneurs it. have all the control they you do, do not I mean if you have the mindset to go into entrepreneurship because you want to be in control you will fail that's the first step to failing Ooh. true Ooh. maybe some people Ooh. have the mindset I don't want to be controlled I don't want to be controlled I want to be in charge I want to be in control I want to be the boss I want to be the boss I mean it takes Wrong a lot to be, be the thing. boss it takes a lot to be the boss it's a lot of responsibility exactly of people's salaries are depending on you customers are depending on you the pressure can be I feel like it's even easier to have a career path and just go, oh, I'm a career woman. It's Honestly, easier to do that than doing business. So, yeah. um, my sister is a, she's a career woman and she's like, I do not understand why somebody in their senses will be an entrepreneur because she watches me and she's sure. She and knows what you have to deal with inside. on a daily basis. Because she, yeah, she knows what I have to deal with and she's just like, why will you choose? They, they didn't force you. I don't understand. <laughs> it takes grit and perseverance, yes, really. It does. It does. Yes, it does. But then you find that you be amazed that people are watching you. People are really, really watching you. So I uh, earlier today I actually got a call from my accountant and he said, "You know, madam, you are so dogged. Ah, you are so do- you have to tell your story in the future, you and see? I'll be there to support you with the numbers." And I just looked and said. Oh wow, people are looking though. Yeah, and that's that's one of the um the thing that drives entrepreneurs, knowing that someone is learning, watching, yeah. someone is being inspired by what yeah. you're doing. You know, it, it, it's just, just it's you know, a gift. Sometimes as an entrepreneur, you're just you're just get you're just getting by you know, today, you know, getting by today, let's move to tomorrow. One day at a time, let's just survive. But people are, are, are but just then watching. people are they looking like thinking is fancy. I think that's why people don't think being an entrepreneur is sexy. Fancy. Oh, it's an easy thing. People look up to you. I don't want people to look up to me. <laughs> just want to make a successful business. <laughs> well, it's the Valentine season, hence we're talking Ooh. love and success. What's yes. got love got to do with success? I mean, I'm sure you already understand by now that love's got everything to do with success right, in business. And, and there's various Korea angles and everything. So there's love from the perspective of your relationship love um, yeah, that's, with the opposite sex. How, does that affect your success? 
uh, or can it? And then also, does your love for what you do translate to success translate in to that? Success. So this triangle. Now let's talk about the other part. Which other part? Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll talk about it. Sure. Well, you want to know how love can influence your business decisions and success, right? Find out after the break. Let's find out after the break. And we have as our in-house guest a special love matchmaker. Yeah. Make some noise for Diddy. Hi, Diddy. He's not, I was thinking we are going to make up some noise like, yay. Oh, my bad. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Diddy is a United States certified and award-winning dating coach in Nigeria. She has a platform called Lagos Matchmaker. And she's been in the matchmaking business for over seven years. Mm. Now, the, pl- the platform Lagos Matchmaker was created as a need for privacy in the dating age, and it is a privacy focused matchmaking platform for singles above 25 years to meet like minded individuals and has now been extended to every location in the world. She has a first degree in economics from the prestigious Howard University in Washington, D.C., and has a master's in international strategy from the same university. And she also works as a statistician for National Bureau of Statistics and has previously worked as a strategist for Nexon Bank and a data analyst with Debt Management Office. Wow. Wow. Such a rich resume there. She chose to leave economics and focus on matchmaking when she saw the need for it in our present busy society. Wow. We're we're, we're an amazing company today. I'm going to learn. I want to know why someone who studied economics left it for matchmaking. Let's start with that. <laughs> okay, well, matchmaking has always been a part of, you know, me. I started, I like did my first matchmaking when I was 16 in secondary school. You know, secondary school, you're having fun. So I had this book, you know, we had this thing called Slum Book. Right. So I had this book and then I made my friends like sign up and write like first place you'd want to like have a vacation, just answer questions, but without putting their actual names. So I was going to just kind of match them with whoever they picked at the end which we didn't do because a lot of people we found out picked people that they really hated. You know, second oh, wow. was mm-hmm. very funny. So yeah, like we ended up not weird. just letting them know what the results were. Well, yeah, it's been really fun for me. So so wow. from this, judging from this, it's obviously a passion. You set it up as a passion and then you turn it into a business. Yes. So but, so how did you make the decision? I mean, given your experience working at the Nexon Bank and debt management office, to go from that very like super analytical kind of job to then decide, you know what, I'm going to do matchmaking and do it full-time. What was that transition like? Um, okay, I always batch my friends a lot. Yes. And so a friend of mine, Taiwo, actually was like, well, you keep, you know, you're always introducing people to people. You know, why don't you just do it like a business and get paid for it? And I was like, hmm, you know, it sounds interesting. So I just started doing it often free. So just matching people for free. But when the crowd came in, so to try to control the crowd, obviously we brought in the monetary aspect to right. just get people. And I'm sure free. that economics came in. We had to figure out the mm-hmm. economics of the matchmaking. So it just match. It was a match made in heaven. Yes. It, it worked together, right? right. Yeah, it the does. experience as an economist into yeah. the business and working with statistics, like it's just it's just the perfect balance, actually. So. Who would have known the statistics and matchmaking go together? Never say never. That's a key word there. So now we're talking about passion, success, love and success. Um, I mean, passion and love being a prerequisite for success in business. Tell us, what has love got to do with your business success? My love for the business? Yeah. Uh, a lot, actually, because I think if I was doing something else, I would probably give up, you know, because you get to points where you're like really tired and you're like... I can't keep doing this. But with something you enjoy, I remember like the first year when I started, I would not sleep. Like I would wake up like 2 a.m. Just anxious and ready to respond to people. I was really, really excited like my first year. Not that I'm not excited now, but... (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was really, really exciting. It was thrilling, and when you get people actually matched, like you get like um, invitation cards for weddings. Wow, I can't even explain the feeling. It's just wait, it's hold just on, surreal. So you introduce people who've never met before to previous strangers. Yeah, and based on what you've done for them, mm-hmm. 
They got hitched. Now married, I'm assuming some probably have kids too. Yes. So you're a godmother to how many kids? That is beautiful. Now, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, but when you meet someone at a bar or something, you're still strangers anyway, so. Right. And then you get to know the person. So Tell us the feeling. Process. How does it feel like knowing you brought people together and then they have a family now? It's really exciting. It's really, it's just, it's an awesome feeling to just know you did that. And just finding out how grateful people are. Because lots of them come back and tell you. Wow. You know, they're not obliged to, so not everybody. But a lot of them come back and tell you, you know, this has really worked for me. Some of them come back with issues in their relationship and like, oh, my wife is doing this. And we're like, that's not our <laughs> this is your business. We'll direct you somewhere else. Right. Let's go a counselor do. for that one. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just really exciting to. Wow. Have that. So it means that you're, you're part of a lot of people's lives because you brought them together. Now let's talk about the challenges that you said that when there were problems in marriage or storms in the marriage, people like, oh, they come back to you. Does that in any way deter you from moving and like, okay, what if I bring these people together and then there's their problems and they blame it on me? No, because in every relationship, I really don't know any relationship you wouldn't have problems in. You know, meeting by yourselves, matchmaking, any process, you would come through, you know, problems. So it's something that's expected, and I feel like as matured individuals, they do know that going into a relationship, you should expect some kind of challenge. Hmm. Now let's talk about the the um, the people you match make. Do you have a target audience? I was- 25, I saw that. Does it mean from 50, 70, 80, you don't have um, any kind of... It's twenty five and to, above, right? Yeah, twenty five and above. And above, okay, there's yeah. no limit from twenty five. Yeah, we, we, well, we just know like the oldest person right now is seventy six. Wow. So we just kind of, you know, so, so there's do, like how, do, how did the seventy six year old find you? That's why there are few because there are a lot of them that are very technology, you know. Okay. So sometimes you find people that sign up for their parents or wow. like widows and stuff. They're like, oh, I'm getting married. I don't want my mom alone or my dad alone. So you find people sign up for people, but then some of them do sign up for themselves. Oh. Wow. All right, more to come when we come back from this short break. Stay with us. We're here with Didi, CEO, Lagos Matchmaker. So you welcome back. Uh, we're still here live with the economist turned matchmaker. Yeah, so um, we've been talking about matchmaking, the business of matchmaking, that is. And, you know, just allowing your passion mm, and come alive in your business. Who ever thought that people could make money from bringing people together? From making love happen. From making love happen, yeah. Some cheddar. Mm. Nice. And then it feels good to know you're doing something that you're passionate about. Right. And then you're working on purpose. And then you pe- the fact that you're bringing people who who raise families feels like what level of gratification are you feeling or you must be feeling when you do that successfully? Yeah, I mean, matchmaking has been there for like forever. I mean, in those days, like you would have the old lady in the village like pair people up already or have parents like book and say, okay, my son is marrying your daughter. They're not playing or like they're really serious because mm. they like the family. So matchmaking has been there, like, in Africa culture for, like, forever. I think our parents, African parents, are really great at matchmaking. Yes, yes. Right. I mean, well, the yes. Yes. Them. That culture, that's true. Yeah, we yes, matchmaking based on the family, though. They're like, the family, the family. I want you to marry Obi's. Um, you want to make sure there's no insanity in that yeah. family. They can take care of your child. I've seen how they like relate. That. So I know that the mother and the father are okay. Yeah. All your friends, the fathers are business partners. Yeah. We want to, to take on the legacy. Yeah, and to secure the business the legacy. legacy. I had a friend that her dad didn't let her get married to someone because he was like, no, I know the father. So this is not even about the son. I know right. the father, and he used to beat the mother up. Mm. So you can't get married to this because this probably happened to you. So, but to be honest, even though in this area you're like you don't want your parents to you know get involved. To be honest, the, there's a high likelihood that if a parent does that, that a child is going to take it on, except if the child has been to therapy. Yeah, because the reality is, because what you see is what you do from mm. a parenting standpoint. Yeah, but then you know with cases, there's always the. You know, like Will Smith, apparently his dad used to beat his mom up a lot and everything. 
but he never did that. But so did he ever go through any kind of like psychotherapy to kind of deal um, with that? This is not really right. right. that I think the people who seen who saw their parents do certain things right. that made up their mind not to but go in that path. Will Smith would be the anomaly because Chris Brown saw his parents and, and did that. Yeah. But I think it's always like two ways, like. When you like um being a family like you came from divorce, like either like really respect marriage or you're really against that's marriage. Yeah. 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 That's true. So that case is where like one of the siblings just really hates the idea of marriage. Mm-hmm. One of the siblings really loves the idea of marriage. Yeah, born in the same house. And wants to do everything home. to make yeah. sure he has yeah. or he or like she has having marriage. a brother and one of them is really like I'm going to you know, he beats his wife, everything. While the other one is like I'm really against wow. touching my wife. So it could just go both ways. And I guess that's why the parents try to be safe and be like you know it's like it's because we don't know how it's gonna go exactly That's so true. so do we have parents coming to you to match make their children yes we've had certain cases like that um so i had a mother she wanted to match make both of her daughters and she was like they should be married now but she blames herself because she moved to america and just didn't let them socialize with nigerians and now she wants them to get ma- married to nigerians Mm. So it's wow. like difficult. So but the mothers come to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not surprised. <laughs> the, the, these daughters they were not up for it at all. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to try and match make people. People try it all the time. Yeah. It's hard to match make someone that doesn't want to be match made. You mentioned hard. something on uh, doing a bit what you said. Um sometimes children come bring their parents to be matched. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. That dynamic, yeah. Tell, tell us about that. that. Especially when children are getting married and you're like the last one or you're just the only child. You just don't want to leave your parents behind. You're like, I want my mom to have someone. I want my dad to have someone. So this is the case maybe maybe the, um, the one is diseased. is diseased or something. Right? Yes, when there's okay. disease or just separation with the mom or uh-huh. something. Right. So they're like, I just want someone for my mom. So do you have someone for that? You know, and all that. So people do that all the time. But you know what? That's a very honest fair because you're like, I, I'm leaving the house. Hmm. How's mom? Hmm. How's dad going to fare? You know, are they going to get lonely? Let's make sure that that's not happening. That's the yeah. Thing. Wow, you're making magic happen. So tell us about the business side of this. You know, there's the love side and the beauty that you're creating there. But how, you know, building a business in Nigeria is no joke. And you've managed to take this global. You know, you've got clients in, in the Middle East, in Europe. How have you All over the world. set up a base that is stable enough that you can take this global? Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, it was a passion, so I was interested. But obviously, even with a passion, you should learn about what you're about to do get knowledge from people that have done that before in the past sure, sure. so i did go to get certified and like studied had a lot of textbooks read and took exams you know just to be sure that i understood what it took and then afterwards you kind of just um try to make sure that you you know address every challenge you have in order to just stay because there are a lot of people that come in the same business line as you are and some people just don't stay long enough Right. But you have to stay long enough. Luckily, it's a passion, so that helps you as well. But it's still frustrating along the way. You find times where people are trying to tell you how to run the business, them, you know, yourself. <laughs> people are telling you, oh, no, I don't think you should do this, you should do that. You know what that means? I, I, how, I want to hear how you filter that. Because even as an entrepreneur myself, I feel like every other day I'm getting advice about, no, you should do it this way, you should do this other thing. How do you feel? So how do you know what real, works for you? What to, what to take on and what not to take on. Yeah, there's always... I think people should just... You have to realize what works for you. Like, try stuff and find out what works for you and, you know, repeat that. Right. Because there are lots of motivational speakers out there, lots of different <laughs> business ideas out there. People are telling you, don't do this. It will work this way and do that. But every business is different. So if you follow, like, everyone's advice, you're going to be, you like, so lost. so confused. Yeah. So you need to actually find out what works for you. Right. And then stick to it. So a lot of times I find people telling me, so how do you not... You know, have your business have faces on it. Like people should be able to see the faces of people, you know, and it won't work this way. But I'm like, no, with everyone, like there's so many matchmaking platforms, everyone is doing this. Yeah, obviously they're doing this because it's working, right? Right. But I'm trying to target, that's not my target. My target is like just a little percentage of the people that want that private aspect because I want that private aspect. So what I'm getting out of this is you have to understand your target market. Exactly. And the needs of that market. Exactly. Because if you're showing, for people who want privacy, that's their biggest need. And you're showing their faces off. You've, you basically just ostracize them. They're going to be like, I'm going to stay away from this because exactly. I don't want my business out there. Exactly. So if there's platforms who make it public, but if you want privacy, yeah, you're sure to get it. Because people like, give you advice. Right they're like, just, you know, market, advertise everywhere. And then you sell clothes for children. And then because everyone's telling you advertise everywhere, you're going to advertise on 
platforms that have nothing to do with children because you have to understand that the market you want your target market are those are that the, is that the audience for that page you're advertising Correct. on you know because if they're not the ones then people are going to see your you know thing don't make sense like valentine's day obviously my platform has a lot of singles so people come to advertise during valentine's day right people do come to advertise children's clothes and stuff like people would want to try that but it doesn't make sense when that's not your target audience. Right, so the conversion they're going to get is going to be very low compared yeah. to the person who's, you know, speaking to the same. That's your niche. Yeah, you really don't know that. You just feel like I'm advertising, I'm doing just something. Advertising. Yeah. yeah, I'm doing you something good. You have to good. advertise and then get. You have to advertise with wisdom. And they're like, oh, every, but I had a lot of likes and comments. But it doesn't transform into... So into cash. Exactly. Well, it entrepreneurs <laughs> here, it's about creating value, not about likes and followers. Exactly. You just feel like if it's likes and followers, it's okay. But you don't get, you know, clients from that. It doesn't well, let's really talk make about sense. this. Even in this age of social media and this whole popularity contest, yeah. what's more important? <laughs> Likes, follows, or actual cash in the bank? Depends on money in the bank. <laughs> no, but it depends on your aim as well. Because really? some people, they already have that money in the bank. Correct. And their aim to get more money or whatever they plan for their platform is not short term. Mm-hmm. So short term is like if you're looking for like money and stuff, obviously, which is like the basic for every business. Right. But some people are thinking more long term. So they don't actually they spend a lot of money trying to get that likes and follow, getting their page popular enough. They're not yeah. telling you that it's outright for advertising, but that's their end game. So that eventually they can use the page, right? Exactly. So okay, that's their end game. That. I get that. So, that so, the, so, it, depends. so it's, it depends on what your strategy is. If your strategy yeah. is in the long run to make money off the body of you have, then popularity makes sense because you are building yeah. the value you are building. Yeah. However, if it's to sell a product, yeah, then, then you don't need the popularity. It's not the popularity because, yeah. if, for example, you have a thousand followers and you have fifty percent of them as customers. That's amazing. Exactly. Then, if you have a hundred thousand, you don't even have five customers. Exactly. Okay, <clears throat> let's come back to your education, your educational qualification that you have gathered so far. Being an economist, a strategist, and a statistician, tell me how does this three work together to give you optimal results as a matchmaker in your business? Um, hmm, I would say the most interesting or the one that has had most impact, impact would be the strategy. Mm. Because obviously strategy, we had to take course to be, um, we had to take the entrepreneurship course to kind of teach you. You have to actually open a business and try and sell it to the class and all that extra. So we did learn a lot that we could implement, you know, in real life. You learn like, you know, the whole Coca-Cola and Pepsi battle, you know, all that real life lesson, you learn it and be able to impact it in your own life when you start a business. So how's, how has that particularly impacted on your business specifically now? How do you, would you say strategy? How do you strategize when it comes to clients, when it comes to the success overall of the business? What are the specifics now? Yeah, you research on people that are doing similar things with you. Yeah. So you see what you're doing right or wrong, what you need to do or what you don't need to do. But also you need to understand your clients more than anything. So if you're looking for like the whole client, like the whole world, like every single person, you could get confused. But if you have like a, you know, tight client base, like, oh, I want people that want privacy and stuff like that then you know that those are the people you try to advertise for and you wouldn't advertise for them the same way you would advertise for just every single person you know so you would it would with strategy you would ask them what they wanted you would see what was working and being someone you know I'm single myself and I want privacy as well questions I would ask you know being a client myself is just like the perfect thing because questions I would ask like hmm, where'd you go and meet like reasonable single people mm. like where have I met the best single people in Lagos Unfortunately, I mean, it'll be in, like my area and stuff like that. But, you know, that is what the question that other people like you are asking. Like, where do I go to meet single people? I don't have time. What do I do to actually meet single people? Let's talk about that, Miss Allah. She's single and she's a matchmaker. How does that work? Like, yes, haven't you matchmaked for yourself? Yes. Hey, yes. What, what's Hello. going on? <laughs> is that, are you intentional about, about this or it just happens that, oh, it didn't happen? Yeah. It does. How do you make it happen for others and it hasn't happened for you? Are you just not ready? Yeah, you feel, because people always expect that everyone should just, the end game is you just want love, you want marriage, you want this. But that's not the same for everybody. And I mean, I always tell people, like, who would you take advice from, dating advice from? Someone that's actively dating or someone that's married. 
So that's married mm-hmm. hasn't dated. Well, I mean, dated in a while. Just dating for dates <laughs> yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like that. Every while. year, that's like you dating things you need to know. Exactly. exactly. Because if you're married so for a long time, in the dating world now. <laughs> this, is like, <laughs> this is funny. I was going to say, say that the new slags, like everything there is, the things you should avoid saying, you know, things you should look out for. So give us one tips. Tip. Yeah, we first aids. What are you supposed to do as a lady, and what not? What not to do? Just give us basic tips. Um, yeah, no, but basic tips. I think they've always just been the same. You know, try to be yourself. But then they change over time because people tell you don't look for red flags. People tell you, oh well, look for red flags. You know, so all those things just. So what do you say, Lagos Matchmaker? About first dates. First dates. <laughs> first dates. What, what should you do on first, first dates? Date, you should just really enjoy it. Well, for me, I just really enjoy myself and just get to know the person and have fun. You know, because a lot of times people just get calculative in their head. Mm. This might be the one person. This might be the one. Now, yeah. let, me, let me get to something you posted. I remember I followed that post. I saw it when you said, um, ladies have this mindset when they're going for events. And then you go all dressed and glammed up and it, it doesn't happen. You come back home, you're deflated. Like, you, you're feeling sick and tired of this cycle. So, I don't understand. They're going to the event thinking you're no, going to meet a Yeah, people yeah. do oh, that oh. often. You, you, I mean, you're getting... That's the social aspect. The social yeah. aspect. Yeah. Like, so you're going for a wedding, you're getting the ashray B, the guineas and all that, you're saying, oh, I'm not going to invest my money in this and not have a return at the end of the day. And the return oh, is I having... I think the return was the fun time at the party and not everyone has that. that. That's that's with all the friends. That's <laughs> supposed to be the idea, but that's not yeah. what the, the case most of the time is. People have expectations high to, to, to meet someone. To someone, someone yeah. And then you go on this event and then it doesn't happen. You come back on feeling really... And you said something that you have to really go out and have fun, enjoy yourself and not have the... Oh, I'm going to meet this yeah, person. I I that. That. It's happened to me, so that's why with dating, whenever I put something out there, it's because I'm going through it or it just happened to me. At a point in time, I know I went out and then I found myself like turning my neck a lot. And I was like, what am I turning my neck a lot? I was looking around at people like, what kind of crowd? What's going on here? I wasn't really having fun. Mm. So a particular time, I just went and I was like, I just want to dance and have fun. And then I, that was like the best, you know, and that was like the formula. Since then, I'm like, my neck is not turning. I'm not looking for anybody or looking at anybody's just face. Have a blast. I just want to go and dance. Yes. And does it work when you have the mindset of having that blast and it works out that people approach you? That's right? funny thing, yes. So do you know what I found that it, guys find it sexy when you are just like owning your space? So if you're having fun and you just look like you're not worried about anything, it's almost like they feel like you're drama free. So they, they then want they to haunt approach you. you. But if you look like, oh, t- talk to me, please just talk to me. They yeah, like, in my okay. mind then I'm like, I can't even dance and go too low. I'm like, they'll be like, oh, this is not too much. You are judging yourself yeah, so like, much. Oh, wow. Why are you overdoing? Being so you analytical. Why are you just doing all this? Free. Instead of just being free. So when I realized that I just wanted to have fun and be free, everything was happening then. That's when I didn't want it to happen because I wanted to just go and dance. Have fun. Have fun, but... Now let's talk about yeah. the table turning lately. We hear it all. It's a man's world and then women are better do things that men can do and all of that. Tell us about your idea or what you think about women going for it. I mean, taking the bold step. Hey, guy. Hey, dude. Can we hang out? Yeah, I think women nowadays do that a lot. I do that, I honestly. Ooh, like, I like your honesty, really, I, I, on this show. I like how honest you are. Oh, I yeah, sure. about this. <laughs> Tell us. I know a lot of guys say, oh my God, it's refreshing. Like, I'm so surprised. They're shocked because they don't expect you to. You know, if I'm talking to a guy for a while and we haven't had, like, a first date, I would be the one to bring it up because... I'm like, okay, let's just go have drinks or something. I would bring it up and they're like, it's shocking, you know, it's refreshing. So I think for a long time, obviously, because men have been in the position to make the choice. So men choose the lady. So if only five guys approach you, it's like, that's it. This is my option. <laughs> I have to marry one of these five guys. Wow, wow. This, this is my now, destiny. It's quite limiting. I but now, about yeah. It that way. yeah, but now that you can choose, it's like, I don't have to just marry these five guys that yeah. chose me. The other guy that did not choose me is you, I want. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, women are getting really bold about yeah, the day. Like, this guy that didn't choose me, that's why I like, choose you. You Somehow, you've come around like... <laughs> so, yeah, I think women have the choice now, so it's different. So, they're like, I don't have to just settle for the options now. I just... Can you can own your destiny. Yeah, man. go get the guy you want. Okay, now let's go back because this, the theme for this episode is love and success. You know, having to say that love is has got so much to do with success in business. Tell us how your passion has translated into your biz, business success now. Ooh, oh, okay. Well, having love for what I do has just helped me to just stay in it. So when I wake up in the morning. You know, I feel like I know each person. And that's the thing with just not being automated. We're having the manual experience. Because these are people you talk to daily. 
you know, like I could see them on the road and like, oh my god, I know so much about this person. I might not be able to approach her and talk to her. Maybe she's a celebrity or something. But I do just, you have celebrities come to you? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, but I just feel like I know you because we've, you know, spoken on the phone. And I know things you like and things you hate. You know, based on reviews, people are like, oh my God, this guy actually used am um, instead of am. Um, you know, wow. <laughs> stuff like that. So, you feel like you know the person from that aspect. So, some a lot of ladies have this, um, you know, from the voice note, you hear the, like, sense of humor and stuff. Right. So, you already know that this lady wouldn't do well with this guy. Yeah. The guy already on his own note sounded very straight. I want this, I want that. You, you know? think psychology has a role to play in this? Oh, so much, so much. Wow. Yeah, so much. Yeah, I think that's a course I need to. I mean, I've taken the course, but I need to take like like full extra. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, it does it's, a lot. It's, it's, it's good to always be a lifelong learner because, especially since you're, de- I mean, when in people, any business you're doing, you're dealing with people at the end of the day, no matter what you're selling. Even if you're selling toothpaste, people are using the toothpaste. So, mm-hmm. therefore, you're dealing with people. And it's, it's important to always understand how people work because then you're able to then adapt what you're doing for the people. So I think that's amazing that you're, think, you're not thinking, oh, I've been doing this for so long, I know everything I need to know. Mm-hmm. Then, you know I'm going to keep adapting and learning. That's right. But I want to ask a question. Since this is she pronounced about women entrepreneurs, do you think that women who are enterprising, who are you know, business founders or leading a business might struggle with love or finding love versus a woman who's just like maybe a nine-to-five and is... Um, not necessarily the kind because usually you will find that most women who are starting a business are a bit they've got a bit of grit I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for mm-hmm. a bit of grit and a bit of fire and are those women because you know you're, you're the boss at work now you're CEO and then you get home you're supposed to not be <laughs> CEO and do you find that some women struggle with that I don't know if you've had any clients like, like the that. boss ladies yeah the yeah. boss lady how do they make I, it work I haven't home? had the experience because at home that's like when they're married relationship right. aspect which we don't really deal with right so I don't know like how but they do you, juggle do you see that? any trend in maybe what they request for well, women like, who might be in those power positions not even necessarily just entrepreneurs they might just be in power positions oh well. yes yes they do have like a longer list oh wow can you take us through this list what, I, I what's the list. demand <laughs> what's the basic demand that they want from these women like that yeah. from us ladies yeah before they even sign up I always tell them that if you have the unicorn desire I pre- can't sign you up because I don't waste anybody's time so what do you mean by unicorn desire, desire? when we want something that's almost impossible to achieve mm-hmm. nothing is really impossible <laughs> but we don't want to sell false hope and tell you that yes. Are you trying to so say you, so that a woman an idea of what this kind of boss lady might ask for? That is what you call impossible. A unicorn desire. <laughs> I no, a lot of them don't have the unicorn desire. They're like pretty good, but we just tell them ahead of time if you do have the unicorn, like when you want a so whole dark, handsome, successful English must be spectacular. You know his looks. There is something about that English be flowing. Yeah, know, but so. that's why you have one. They have a deep voice, like a baritone yeah, voice. You know, very wide situation. <laughs> you know, the your belt, your mask. You know, Ooh. six packs. Ooh. Is that too much? How impossible is that? Hey, no. Go. Like you could have a, that in your list of like you know you have ten things in your list, uh-huh. okay. and obviously like if. So you have two things. You're like, okay, I'm going to go back two of them. Two of three. three. Mm-hmm. So people want the whole ten things. Like if one person doesn't have all these things, so I do don't you want find that, that the boss ladies are, are more like, wait, they must meet all my requirements or no go? Yes, we do so find it. Yeah, they love more type A. Yeah, so that's yeah. a unicorn desire that you mm-hmm. can meet. Yeah, we can meet every because it's almost impossible. Because even her herself, I'm like, do you meet? That person's everything. In her dreams. In her dreams. No, no, trust me. We know on our end what the other person's asking for. So you don't because it's almost impossible to just miss everything. Wow. Like tick, sense of humor, tick. Yeah. You know, body wise, tick. Tick. Family Attitude, tick. tick. Yes. Education, tick. Yes. Financial status, tick. Financial status, everything. Tick. It's almost impossible. Net worth. Net worth. <laughs> mm, not your salary. <laughs> It's always impossible to find Is that, that too much to ask? I mean, really? Hello? Really? If, well, I mean, if you can <laughs> offer, that's why people say the rich marry the rich. If you can offer, if you have something to offer that's close to that, then of course. So it's are you finding that that kind of happens where people end up with people who are basically in their similar financial Yeah, it does, and I really encourage that. I'm just really not against it. Why do you it. encourage that? I mean, the whole Cinderella story, I know it's nice. Right. You know, that's why it's a fairy tale anyway. Mm-hmm. Because Cinderella was like, in this day and age, there's no fairy tale. Godmother. We have Harry and Meghan to start with, to deal with. She wasn't broke. Oh, she wasn't broke. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Yeah, but there's a level. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about 
two persons being on the same, not the same level now, but on the similar, same level. Right? Yeah, similar level. Okay. Well, it has to be similar, but it can't be that like Cinderella and the Prince. It can't okay. be that. Okay. that, that it can't be a stark like, contrast. That's you're like sweeping the floor, like really poor, and then the guy's like, you know, it's it happens kind of, though. Somehow. You know, it does, but don't rely on that happening because yeah. it's going to just, you'll be disappointed. That's your why, hopes. Why would you be disappointed? Why because, can't Cinderella happen in 2020? Because that Prince himself, this day and age, mm. he's looking for someone that's going to match up with him. Yes. He wants to come and look for liability too as well. But what if it's the girl that's the boss lady and the guy is... That pretty much happens. Well, that pretty much happens too sometimes. But even the boss lady herself, she doesn't want someone that's going to be a liability, you know. So, in 2020, don't nobody want a liability. Yeah. Everyone's so, mar- marrying their level. Like, yeah. Why I'm saying it pretty much happens for the ladies is because it's easy to have a lady who's a boss lady who mm-hmm. wants a man who's, you know, her own standing, right standing, has right. the network, the net worth and all of that. And then she doesn't find it. She finds someone who just genuinely loves her. And you know how women are wired. They just mm-hmm. want the attention, the love. And then she sees that. She's a Okay, maybe I can settle. But what he does is probably not be too far. Like, he's not a Cinderella. Like, he's not... Well, it happens in movies. Like, he's her <laughs> driver. And she falls in love with mm. her driver and stuff does like that. Does that happen in real life, though? It does. I've seen women. Rarely, though. I've, I've seen women. <laughs> <driver, but maybe laughs> not driver, like, but... Maybe the guy is, like, maybe I mean, he bank does. manager. And she's, like, you know... That's, the, that's okay. That's, that's still okay. okay. That's and okay. Then, and then he's what? And, He's you know, maybe he's a bank manager and then she's like running like a oh, multi billion dollar himself. company. You say the bank manager. Well, I have seen a case of a guy who was a youth copper. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then, good-looking youth copper. Mm-hmm. He's got. He had the potential of becoming really good because he's intelligent. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I know Something that. to work with. Yeah. So he was just, starting out a lot of the, the, the lady was the boss lady. And then she didn't mind. Yeah, she so went for it. So and we regardless, she, you mean like she's been like she's been okay? She's from us. a wealthy family, actually. Mm-hmm. So the tone was set for her. Okay, she took on the father's business, and then against all odds, this is the he loves me. He he, so are they he may not. Yeah, sure. For how long? Five, six years. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, ag- when I say against all odds, you know that people who are from that family, you know, how she yeah, had to deal was, with. He for his lots. family will be like, mm-hmm. was she older? Yeah, so I'm sure mm. even his family will be like they'll kick against it too. Yeah, I mean if you watch, if you watch, her, if you saying. even watch shows like um, Ninety Days Fiance, yeah. you do that. <laughs> you see, you see, these cases happening. So it's yeah, but it's, 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 it's it's women doing this. Yeah, it's so rare, but it's it happens, happen. but it's rare. So when someone puts all their hope in that, like, this is going to happen to me, I'm the Cinderella, and I'm definitely going to meet this prince. Okay, can't, no, no, that cannot be your dream. It just needs to just happen. Happen like, naturally. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if that's what you're going for, you, you will almost look you become a gold digger. Yeah, and you're like, like okay, if you're not, even, yeah. you're not aiming at being a gold digger. That's it what just happens. Saying. Like, if it just happens, that's more natural. But yeah. if you're there thinking, I want to be Cinderella, I want to be rescued, <laughs> then you're looking for... Trying to you have to go to the places where you can meet that prince anyway. Yeah. So right, right. Well, right. And we can't even afford the places then. Okay, okay now I, I would have loved to talk about places now, with regards to finding the perfect match. Do you think where you at, where you hang out, matters or has oh, a role to play? So where, where did you see at the top three places in Lagos? Oh, uh-huh, I didn't see that. Good yeah, single people. Yeah. <laughs> I would only speak about the places I've been to because I'm not about mainland. Because I know they have great places there too. On the mainland? Yeah. So mainland ladies, hold on. All right, listen. <laughs> and guys. So I don't know about the mainland, so just the island actually. Okay. okay. So Let's the Dublin is really nice. Has like a nice crowd. Obviously the usual like sip has a nice crowd. Personally, I think Velvet has like, it's the club for like married people. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> it just seems that way. I just feel like. So basically if you don't go clubbing, <laughs> you ain't going to find, you ain't going to find a No, of course you can do like day parties and stuff. You can, but right. that doesn't happen during the week because most people are at work, right? Busy. Right, 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 so like right. church and, you know. Saturday. Church, you have to be lucky. It's a good place. It happens yeah. every day. I mean, you have to be lucky to maybe the guy sit close to you, next That's to you, true. or you're working towards a parking lot and then <laughs> your, your Bible falls and then you attempt to pick it up. Sounds like kind of some people. You know, ladies, we always play these movies in our head, and in that we fantasize a lot. Mm-hmm. We do. Well, it's been such an interesting talk yes. with you um, on this episode. We really appreciate you for coming here through for this love episode, Valentine. Right, right. What would your last take be, or what would you be your last line for the Valentine season? Oh, Valentine. Oh, okay. Right now, if you're still single, just be single because. It's already Valentine's Day. <laughs> so it's, like, is it too late to find? I mean, we have how many days it's to go? It's already Valentine's. Day. Yes. It's already Valentine's. Day. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. sure. So. <laughs>
Right. So you have to wait for the next Valentine. <laughs> look, look, if you really, to be honest, if you really need a Valentine and you feel like nobody's going to value you. I mean, be your Val. There's nothing wrong with that. Val- like, I mean, it's just like about loving yourself. Loving yeah. yourself. The reality so. is you can't even love somebody else if you don't know how to love yourself because yeah. then you don't even know what you're supposed to give. Mm-hmm. So get yourself some flowers. Well, you're doing, like what you get said, with the whole, like, like your Bible spa, falling down yeah. and picking it up. Mm-hmm. You're waiting for life to happen and things like that to just happen. Your Bible doesn't fall down. I mean, you make it fall, baby. <laughs> I say, if you don't have about just approaching the guy and just saying, "Hey, that takes a lot of guts." Is that what you do? Like, what's the worst that could happen, though? Right? It, no, right? right? What's the worst that could happen? He says no, and life goes on. Right. Oh, that takes a lot, a lot of boldness. Go to the spa, get some chocolate. You know, I mean, it's yourself. easier said mm-hmm. than done. That's I mean, a lot of ladies can be really depressed or would have to go through the dis- depression phase because you're on social media, you're seeing your friends hanging out. Men are going to be buying cars, chocolate. Oh my, people are going to be posting. And it can would you say people Girl, who you are, know the argument people that who are that single should stay out of social media for <laughs> now because <laughs> it can be really no, depressing. To be honest, I think people should not look to social media to validate them. But no, no, you're on a regular day, like social media can depress your regular yeah. day. Yeah, so on a regular day, so not Valentine's Day is not going to be I different. Mean, it's amplified. Um, Valentine's just amplifies it. Maybe Christmas I just, amplifies I it for sure. Exclude your emotions from social media. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you will be on a roller coaster. You'll be having a fantastic day. And you'll, oh, this picture is making me sad. What's your problem? <laughs> Oh, wow. I hope this episode has really touched a part of you. Interesting. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it once again. Uh, we hope to have more of you in the future. Yes, yeah, sure. Do. Thank you. Yes, that'll be great. Yeah. All right. We'll be back after this break. Do not go anywhere. So we've talked about how passion keeps you going even in the tough days and, you know, it even gets you going. So passion is a necessary ingredient. So I don't know that it's versus profit. I do think that being passionate about business, about what you're doing and about preferring a solution can lead to profit. Because as you stay consistent and you find the solution to the customer's needs, that creates value. Customers will pay for value. And as long as you're having them pay for more, that you are investing in the business that leads to profit so passion can lead to profit so which is stronger which is stronger in terms of building when you're building that business which comes first to be honest to be pa- to passion? be profit driven or passion driven which comes first so the passion will get you started and will get you to the point of profit if you start thinking about profit from the beginning you might miss opportunities because it might be so for example you know how some companies have a loss a loss leader they will have a strategy where a product does not make a profit for a long time because they use that to bring you into their ecosystem once you're in so for example hp does this with the printers when they sell printers they're very cheap they're very accessible but all their profit is on the ink but not you've bought the printer you have invested money in that printer you are going to keep buying <laughs> ink for life and that's where they make the money so it goes hand in hand I do, I, it's not one versus the other but passion usually is what starts the business usually with a drive to make a profit that's usually what businesses are they're profit making ventures and with the passion, you can stay focused and continue until you make huge profits and make millions of dollars and naira. Perfect. I like the answer. I mean, where, I think we had this discussion earlier when you say people can become so passionate and forget about the business side of the passion. Right. What happens in that regard? So to be honest, you know, it's, it's, yeah, you can get passionate and just think it's a hobby. I just like it. I don't want to charge anybody. Mm-hmm. Then let's be clear. It's a hobby. You are helping people. We are not your customers, but your beneficiaries. You're just helping us. It's an NGO if necessary. But It's a non-for-profit. It could be a non-for-profit. So, and, and that's okay as a business model. But you don't have to call it a, a, a profit-making venture if, it's, if that's not what it is. And you need to get clear. Are you just a benevolent person that just wants to give out things for free? Or do you need to, for, to monetize what you're doing? People have different um, different models and there's no model that is wrong. You just need to be clear about what it. you're doing. All right. That answers it. Hope, hope someone um, says, uh, it's okay. I mean, it, 
feels like okay this is a perfect answer i'm sure someone so if you have a passion this. you can turn it into a profit let's be clear and if you already have a profit making venture and you don't care about it you don't have passion for it you know it begs the question where are you going to take it to how big are you going to allow it get if you don't care about it all right so moving on now from the trivia to she motivates Motivate. Yeah. Robert Kiyosaki. I love this man so Ooh. much. Losers quit when they fail. Winners fail until they succeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Losers quit when they fail. Winners fail when they succeed. Did you get this? What does it mean? Losers quit when they fail. So when, when something doesn't go right, it's like what we talked about, passion. Mm-hmm. Passion. Uh, what we said about passion. So, um... When something doesn't go, maybe you expected, you know what, in January we're going to make this amount of money and then you didn't even come to like 10% of it. You can just be like, man, it's not working. And then you just quit the business and start another business in February. Then the same thing, start another business in March. By December, you start with 12 different businesses. Another guy could have had, or another lady, since this is a shipreneur, could have had the same challenge in January where she tried, she didn't even sell one naira in January. And she continued and she continued. And in, even in February, it didn't work. From the trivia to She Motivates, every week we ensure we drop a code that motivates you to keep pushing and moving. Well, today's quote is by Mari Folio. Never start a business just to make money. Start a business to make a difference. Wow. If that doesn't encapsulate this conversation about passion and profit, I don't know what those. So, you just highlight what we talked about, not yes. doing business for the paycheck. Yes. But doing business to make a difference, really. Because if you're trying to make a difference in people's lives and solve a problem, then you're more likely to, to get to the heart of what will solve the problem for them. And when you create value for people, you more make money flow you. naturally. Yes. So it's more like you're not going for it, but it will certainly come. It when you're not even you. aiming at it, you're not focused on, I'm here to make money. I'm here to solve a need, solve, solve a, a solution, a problem, prefer a solution. And then yes. ultimately... Money comes, Money comes from it. Right. I remember when, uh, well, I, I don't remember, I wasn't born yet, but when Apple started and he was trying to create a new computer that was easy and accessible for everyone to use, tech back then thought he was crazy. But now, everybody wants an Apple device. You want to have an iWatch, you want to have an Apple Watch, you want to have an iPhone, you want to have an iPad, everything. I mean, you talked about innovation. Most ideas that are innovative that are disruptive right always seem like they're crazy they always seem a little crazy because that's the point they're disruptive it, uh, people are already managing one way and the other and then you come out with this thing and say well we're going to do this differently but why are we we are okay so far with the suffering that we're suffering and disruptors are always going to be the trailblazers they're always going to be the ones who will set the tone for others to follow and they're always going to be the successful the most successful because you know what they're not settling for the now Right. They're always looking they are creating the future. The future. They're creating the future. And right. I mean, that's the way to go. So dear trailblazer slash sheepreneur, keep Be. making a difference. Be a trailblazer. Well, that's our package for today. Thank you so much for being part of it. We always appreciate when you do this. Listen to us and give us feedback. It is very necessary that we get your feedback. We yearn and crave it. And leave a review for us very important we always say thank you afterwards until the next episode i am bisola on instagram at the bisola and winnie on instagram at winnie da winner and that da is d-a so winnie da winner see you in the next episode till then keep winning